at 302. Uh, roll call, please. Director Hertz. Here. Director Hoffman. Director Hoffman. I think you're both trying to unmute at, at the same, same time. time. Director Hoffman. Let's look here. There we go. Great, thank you. And Director Riley. Here. All present. All present. Um, comments from the public. The public may comment on any item within the district jurisdiction. Please limit your comments to three minutes in length. Public comment is now open. I see we have one member of the public present. If you'd like to comment, please press star nine on your phone or use the uh, raised hand icon. I see no raised hands. All right, public comment is now closed. Okay, action item. Consider adoption of the June 4th, 2020 committee meeting. I move approval. I will second that. We have a motion by Director Rowley and a second by Director Hoffman. A roll call vote, please. Director. Yes. And Director Riley. Aye. And Director Edwards. Aye. Uh, motion approved three to zero. Thank you. Uh, General Manager, now we have dis discussion items. Correct. This uh, item, uh, we prepared a, a quick uh, PowerPoint or PDF uh, that Arlene will put on the screen. Uh, the staff note was fairly thorough, written by uh, Stephanie Locke and uh, backed up by myself. Um, also in there as exhibits were the original responses of the uh, jurisdictions. We did meet with the technical advisory committee earlier today and went through uh, virtually the same presentation. Um, I can report that it was relatively well received. Uh, no, no individual jurisdictions seemed to have any problem with it. Um, We've encouraged them to go back. Uh, Stephanie will send them a reminder in 10 days and we will uh, see if upon, you know, further deliberation or digesting of the information, if any of the jurisdictions have a significant uh, uh, conflict with it. The member of the public who's on right now in this meeting was also on that meeting. That meeting was also attended uh, by uh, Steve Westhoff of the State Water Resources Control Board as well as uh, uh, a very involved woman from the city of Pacific Grove, uh, among others who were just observing. So this uh, presentation will summarize the various tables that were included in the um, staff note. And if we can go to the first one, Arlene. Um, can I, Dave, can I just ask you a quick question? Was yeah. the meeting you're talking about, uh, the technical, was that earlier today? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's the one that we tried to schedule for the end of June, but it ended up uh, two days into July. Thank you. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, and maybe always try to just go up a little bit on the screen, Arlene, so we get the bottom in. Yeah. So these were the initial responses. Um, the important to note is Delray Oaks, who was on the call today, uh, were just too inundated to get a response in, and the unincorporated county did not uh, reply. And then um, what we call some underrepresented entities, the Naval Postgraduate School and the Presidio of Monterey and the school districts, uh, we did not uh, have time to reach out directly to them. Uh, so this is what the initial responses look like, as well as uh, the percentages if each entity were to receive uh, what was requested. Next uh, slide. I oh, think, can I cut in or do you want to finish first? Yeah, no, go ahead. That's good. Okay. Those entities did not have a chance to apply, like Delray Oaks. 
you know, and the neighborhood graduate school and whoever, uh, the school district. Is it too late to try? I, I, I heard the presentation this morning. Right. Too late to let them give a number or that 75 acres? Are we going to break it down across the board for everybody? Yeah, I think what we're going to do, because we're giving this, the jurisdictions a little additional time, is, um, well, Delray Oaks and the county did have time. They were in, in the initial uh, review. Um, I think what Stephanie will do is send out uh, kind of this summary staff note report and uh, the conclusions, the recommendation, and see what we hear back from uh, the three underrepresented in this mix. Okay. Um, which would which would mean, you know, we'd be back to you at the next uh, water demand committee meeting, making minor adjustments if we heard any, uh, you know, loud comments to the contrary of, of what our recommendation is. All right. So on the next slide, what we've done is that we've imputed uh, to Naval Postgraduate School, Presidio Monterey, and the school districts needs based on uh, some information. For example, Presidio of Monterey has a credit or had a credit that expired representing a project they have really wanted to get done over time, uh, which is uh, between five and six uh, acre feet of need. Um, the school districts, we know that the primary thrust of the properties that they've been looking at, in this, in this case, Monterey Unified School District, are outside the district service area, but there are some properties within the district service area. So we kind of just eyeballed that four acre feet. The Cal-Am service area. Yeah, the, I'm sorry, the Cal-Am yeah. service area. And the Naval Postgraduate School really has not indicated in recent years of any needs and have really not done any projects or uh, secured any credits. Um, so we kind of put them at a minimum uh, level uh, just as a placeholder. And then we assigned Delray Oaks uh, water based on approximately 25 uh, multifamily units. And uh, the county uh, we assigned based on, uh, well, what would that be? 60, I guess. Uh, multifamily units, recognizing that the general plan for the county for the Calam service area here is rather limited. Um, uh, Rancho Cañada Estates is back on the, the docket. I think it's 105 units. Um, within that, there might be uh, uh, 20 affordable units, uh, that type of thing. But the other areas of unincorporated county, which, which would include Pebble Beach and some of the Highway 68 corridor, uh, there aren't that many opportunities, but nevertheless, we assign that five uh, acre feet. So when you do that, with the requested amounts from the jurisdictions who did respond, this is what it looks like, and it's uh, 113 acre feet. Next slide. So then we said, you know, 113 acre feet sounds a little unrealistic. What is realistic to, to ask for? And so we focused on what would be considered de minimis. De minimis is one of those Latin phrases that has many different meanings. Uh, it has uh, meaning in law. It has meaning in taxation for fringe benefits. It has meaning in the municipal bond industry where I came from for paying of capital gains versus ordinary income tax on discounted bonds. And it's it's bandied about in many sectors. Um, but what we did is we said, look, we can't over ask. Um, there's not really any available water. So this would be something that the state would be doing as a courtesy to um, its counterpart, the Housing and Community Development Department uh, at the state, in order to let the jurisdictions uh, have some latitude with water. So what we did is we looked at production in water year 2009 when the CDO was uh, instituted, um, our production in the last five years, 
The difference being 3,607, we said, okay, 2% um, two, two of that is, is 72 acre feet. 2% is kind of a, uh, I, I won't get into how or why, but um, 32 years ago when I was in business, 2% was a de minimis amount on something that we used to look at in the investment banking world. And so we rounded that to 75 and said, um, that's a more reasonable ask rather than the 113. Next slide. All right. So then if we take the same proportions that we looked at in table two, that, that equaled 113 acre feet and dial it back to just 75, then this is what all of those allocations would look like. And basically it moved everybody who had three down to two and uh, so forth. Next slide. Then we said, well, you know, this was done by initial response. Uh, some of the responders have water of their own, um, like Pacific Grove, and some of the responders have none, like Delray Oaks, or very little, like Monterey. And, uh, and you can see in the narrative that Stephanie wrote about the different initial requests, some of them have over asked for what they reasonably can anticipate for the next three to four year period. So we said, what other weighting mechanism, mechanisms might we have? And this first one looks at population. So leaving Naval Postgraduate School, Presidio and school districts in place, if we redistributed the remainder based on population, this is what the allocations would look like adding up to a total of 75 acre feet. So it uh, kind of dialed, dialed back Pacific Grove a little bit, uh, increased Seaside by quite a bit uh, and so forth. Next slide. Then we said, you know, population may not be the best measure of need. Uh, this is supposedly housing related. So let's look at, uh, uh, there's a misspelling in this title, uh, it should say, uh, RHNA, the Regional Housing Needs Allocation uh, Goal. And so we did the same thing, leaving the three underrepresented with their two, four, and two. And we then redistributed the remainder based on the RENA goal. And you can see that City of Monterey's uh, Regional Housing Needs Goal is so high that it upped their allocation to 31 acre feet and it radically reduced the allocation to the very smallest of jurisdictions and also uh, increased seaside to a significant number. And then we said, well, okay, Monterey didn't ask for 31 acre feet. They asked for 16 to 23. Um, let's dial them back to a rough average of 20 and redistribute the rest. And so in the next slide, you can see we moved Monterey to 20. We kept uh, Seaside the same. We increased the, the smallest entities, Carmel and Delray Oaks, and um, took five acre feet back to replenish the dis district reserve for the decision the board made to free water up for the garden road project so we would repay that district reserve and then hold that for future discretionary actions by the board if approached by a jurisdiction so this is our recommendation and this is what we uh, told everybody about today and there was no uh, as i said no significant pushback and so that's where we're at the next slide tells you what our implementation timeline is. So this is the ask um, that we told the TAC we would tell them what we were thinking. Uh, we're updating you today on July 2nd. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Stephanie will uh, send a, a reminder to the jurisdictions in about 10 days. And uh, right after the holiday, send a note to uh, Naval Postgraduate School, uh, Presidio, and the school districts uh, just to hear from them. And then we'll come back with really what the final ask is, as well as um, 
we're going to spend some time during August uh, to kind of develop the local coalition, which will include some of the uh, planners from the jurisdictions, as well as some of the non governmental agencies, such as land watch United way. Uh, Monterey Bay economic partnership and others who have a significant interest in housing. We've already had some communication with the state department of. Uh, uh, housing and uh, community development. Um, we've agreed it needs to get to the highest level. Um, so we'll, we'll be working on communication with them and getting their support before petitioning the state water board. Um, last Friday, I had a conversation with a attorney with the state water board. Um, they are aware of this whole process. Um, there's not a, um, a defined mechanism that they have to to provide the relief we're looking for. Um, as you may recall from our last committee meeting, I said that uh, the specific language with respect to relief applied to the reductions in withdrawals, not to all aspects of the CDO. But I think we're going to take the tact that um, that that was an oversight and they should have intended that anything within the CDO that causes a health and safety hazard uh, should be subject to the granting of relief from the deputy director. So that'll be done in late August. And then we've left two months aside for continued discussions to try to get there and then see what happens before the end of the year. And that concludes my presentation. I'll take any questions or uh, kick it back to Stephanie. Okay, thank you, uh, General Manager. Uh, Director Hoffman, do you have any questions? Yes, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, 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 Director Hoffman, can you turn your volume up a little bit, if you can? I know I'm loud. Uh, is that any better? Yeah, that's a little better. Um, so, Dave, in the request from Pacific Grove, which was 31, and in the recommendation, it drops to five, and just so I understand, you're saying that they were comfortable with that? In uh, that's a very good question because they were the one non attendee. Um, I think Stephanie addressed it a little bit in her description of, of their request as being uh, slightly padded. Um, I don't. I don't want to pick winners and losers, so to speak, but they also have their local uh, entitlement. So they have access to quite a bit more water than some of the other entities do. And their request may have overstated their immediate term need. The reason why I ask is um, you mentioned the, the term de minimis and that's coming up with the 75. Um, it just was a curiosity to me why 92 wouldn't be considered to in this also which was if you add up everybody's request um that's what the total was and to, and to just reallocate the 92 as opposed to 75 which um just how that decision was made not to use the 92. yeah to totally agree and then we kind of threw it and this is just at staff level we kind of threw it back and forth and back and forth and yeah, I wish I could say there's greater method and meaning behind it, but um, the original request didn't reflect everything. So it became that 113 number and we kind of felt like 113 was overreaching. And I said, well, you know, let's take a look at this history and, you know, 2% of the reduction doesn't seem like it's a, a big draw on the river. Um, so let's see what that number would look like. And it just looked closer to 75 than to 92. Well, and also consider that the 92 did not include water for Monterey County, Delray Oaks, um, the school districts or the um, Army or Navy. Right. <clears throat> yeah, but I guess my question is, um, 
and I, I recognize that the number in either case is somewhat arbitrary, but to the extent that 92 is what was requested, and if, I guess I'm trying to get my head around what good number would be. Um, if you assume that Pacific Grove overestimated the 31, and is acceptable to them for five, then the 92 is dropped below the 70, right? Right. So there's a potential that the actual de minimis number um, is, depending on where Pacific Grove comes back and either gives a thumbs up or is held on it, um, it could be that 75 is, is even high. Yeah, and I think you'll find that Pacific Grove is not going to be happy about that number. Um, in the letter that we received from them, it's clear that they uh, would like to be considered that, that this request is based on their housing element. Um, so it's, it's a maximum for the housing element that runs through 2023 and that they have asked that the district not uh, consider the fact that they have an entitlement of 37 plus acre feet of water it's still available um, so that we were asked to ignore that fact um, so anyway unfortunately they weren't at the meeting today but um, I'm sure we'll be hearing from them and, and that's a good point and that's why we're providing the second go round to see you know kind of stress test these numbers and see what the jurisdictions say um, we've also requested all of the TAC members to go back and actually discuss this with their policymakers too, because um, they don't really have complete authority to just say, "Oh, well, looks good. Let's let's run with it." Um, you used a, a very good word there, though, arbitrary. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's somewhat arbitrary. Um, you know, we're making an ask for something that we're not really entitled to have, so we wanted to keep it under control. But I can tell you, based on past experience, that there is certainly an emphasis on housing now that uh, the jurisdictions have kind of passed over in recent years. So they are definitely more focused. But I would bet even if we got 75 acre feet that they would not be able to be in a position to permit right. enough projects in three years to utilize 75 acre feet. The other question I had is the that were set aside for the English Coast Graduate School. And the uh, louder, Gary, please. Okay, sorry. Um, the, the numbers that were set aside for the Naval Coast Graduate School and Presidio, um, uh, and as well as the county, because the statement's made in here that the county number is, um, has been estimated. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess I know that based on your presentation that there's going to be an interest in doing a further reaching out to them. Um, and I would hope also to the county um, because, um, again, I, the better information we have, the overall better product that we're going to have to present. Yeah, absolutely. And the county was supposed to be, a, they committed to be on the the uh, meeting this morning, um, but ultimately did not attend. So we do need to hear back from them. That's all I had, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Director Hoffman. Uh, Director Riley. Yeah, I have a few questions um, on the de minimis uh, concept. Um, was the thinking that we're not allowed to have these um, allocations anyway? Was it uh, trying to find what's the small, what's the largest number we can make and have the smallest impact on the decision and have some likelihood of success? Is that where de minimis kind of makes sense? That's where it came from. Yep. Okay. Um, and my question about Westoff, did he participate in the discussion this morning? I did not. It's a purely an observer. Uh, my third question, and I have a fourth question. Um, 
My guess is that the uh, COVID-19 has just uh, stressed everybody out and has put such a damper on everything that's going on economically in the, in the entire community. And that no matter what you ask them about the next four years about building some projects, I have a very uh, kind of different uh, kind of impression that things are going to be slower than everybody's planning on. So whatever numbers you have for three or four years going forward, it's going to be like six or seven years, probably, or at least five or six. So that it's still an optimistic number, even if they give you the numbers. I just think they're very optimistic. Have they mentioned anything about COVID slowing anything down? Uh, well, we've been getting mixed signals on that. Um, Stephanie Locke got a uh, an email or communication today from somebody who wanted to delay an inspection because with COVID, they're just having trouble getting their architect to get plans done in time and so forth. So, uh, you know, this is a residential property. And yet we're, we're extremely busy with water permits right now. Yeah. So, and we do know that the city of Monterey is about to go out. Uh, they're issuing requests for proposals for four fully affordable housing projects in the city. Um, as in addition to the projects that are proposed on Garden Road. So there is action out there. Okay, I was, yeah. I was not expecting much in the way of action. Yeah, and a lot of people are doing accessory dwelling units right now also. Sure, sure, okay. I, uh, I George, just a comment, uh, while business activity is problematic, uh, money yeah. is very, very, affordable at the moment. So people that have access to money, this is a good time to be borrowing. Thanks for that input. Thank you. Um, my last my last question is, let's say we are successful in getting 75 acre feet. Um, and the argument is based on chart or table six. But suppose we get 75 what's the what's the process for changing some of those numbers whether pg comes yeah. forward or the county comes forward or something just because the county doesn't give us information doesn't mean that uh, nothing's going on they're just have their own priorities yeah we did talk about that at, at the tac meeting and you, you raise a a point that i think we need to resolve if we're successful but maybe even resolve at our next uh, water demand meeting which is, okay, if we are successful, do we give it all out based on these allocations right away? Or do we give out, you know, 60% of it or 75% of it and hold the rest back saying, this is our perception of your allocation, but if you're not making substantive progress and someone else comes in and says, well, we really do have a need that we didn't foresee, you know, let's adjust those allocations. And I think that's that's kind of where I'm leaning right now is we say, we're gonna to commit to you that a portion of this final allocation, whatever it is, will be made available to you. Cause you know, developers have to have certainty in order to go to their lenders and so forth. So, um, but I don't wanna just simply rely on nine acre feet in the district's reserve as the only flexibility we have. And because water has been currency in, in this community, if we gave all of the 75 out based on that pattern, you may have a jurisdiction who isn't going to need it, but isn't going to give it up. And so I think we need to be sensitive to that. Well, well Dave, let me cut in there because when we were talking about the district reserve earlier, we had people out there saying we shouldn't have a reserve. So how do we answer that? Because that's why I wonder what we're going to replenish ourselves. Should we have a reserve or not have a reserve? And that's the question. We, I know we got to have a drought reserve. How come we can't have this reserve? I'm just yeah. going to ask you. Well, and in response to that, that um, for example, the Presidio of Monterey, Currently, if we, if right now, if they were to want to move forward with, uh, say, their large dorm project that they currently don't have water for, um, that would be an appropriate ask for use of the district reserve. So I think that 
having having some body of water that is available for community needs um, is important. And we finally got a little bit in there. Um, you know, we've given out some for affordable housing with the Garden Road projects, but if we can reinstate that, then it's available if there's a project that is very compelling that comes forward. Okay. Yeah, and ultimately keep in mind that at the same time, this timeline is being pursued. The Coastal Commission has their hearing on uh, the desal plant in August. So there may be some very good clarity, you know, what's the project and when's it gonna go forward and when is it gonna come online? And chances are, uh, Let's say, for example, it is desal and it's approved to move forward. Uh, if all other remedies for people who don't want it are exhausted, um, well, then you know the timeline. And it could be that, you know, here we are trying to get water in for a four year period, and you may only need a 30 month period. Um, so there's going to be some play, but there's also going to be not, you know, uh, knowledge, you'll know what the project is and when it's going to come online. So as you move through time and year one passes and, and now you're in year two and you're a city saying, well, shoot, you know, I've got 10 more acre feet to go. It may be that by the time whatever project that's going to be built is built, you'll already know that the water supply project, the permanent water supply is gonna be online. So you don't actually need your allocation to commit to availability of water. Um, you know, so it, they're all gonna kind of play together. Uh, Director Riley, you have any more questions? Sorry for cutting in. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm open for cutting in. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, yes, uh, a, a little more on um, the question of, um, priorities and where they come from. Uh, the states made the priority for affordable housing. Uh, they're obviously moving in that direction, but somewhat more slowly because of some budget issues. Uh, but that that priority is expressed in their arena numbers uh, also to the cities. And I just want to I just want to raise the question or at least an interest that I would like to, to see the district uh, think about um, is that uh, we have a district wide view of things. And just because there's, uh, forget the count, there's about nine or so, 10 allocations here. Um, if if uh, any two or three fall behind in any way, it doesn't mean that, this, that the housing in Seaside is going to not serve Monterey or, or Pacific Grove or others. Right. So right. Uh, to the extent that we have a regional approach without, without kind of entering the realm of uh, land use um, decisions, uh, we're, 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 we're more dealing with it as a priority sense about what can happen quicker, what can, what happened that still addresses the problem and what can we do to be on the fast timeline, not just on a, a formula timeline. Uh, and so I just hope, I just hope the 60% idea could, could be developed more and, uh, and, and with the logic that, uh, they see that they can be sold on. Yeah. And I think you can take that same sentiment to the bigger water allocation process. So, you know, here we're just talking about housing and a small set aside and two state mandates kind of compromising with each other. But when it comes to the permanent water supply solution, if we, the district are gonna, as currently planned, uh, allocate that water, you don't wanna allocate all of it. You wanna allocate what you think is needed for the next decade and then see who grows how fast and who's gonna you know, where's the next area of growth going to come from and the next area of growth so that you're able to kind of track the actual need rather than, you know, what we what we had done in the past when the district reserve was uh, given away was we divided it by uh, eight and we just gave everybody one eighth, uh, the six cities, the county and the airport district. Well, that's that's not paying any attention to where the growth's coming from and who's going to have the need next. And um, so I, I think that what you're saying is something we have to also keep in mind, not just for this process, but the, the permanent process. Yeah, good, good. I don't I don't have more questions. OK, uh, a few from me. I, I like your chart. I like your timeline. Well, I like you to add one more thing into your timeline. 
when are we going to talk to the PAC, the mayor's right. politics? I want you to add that in there, in either September or October, before we go into that. Yeah, I think it would be right before we head to um, trying to build the coalition with the housing and community development folks at the state. So, okay, let, let's plan that and add that in there. And the next thing is for Mr. Laredo. Hey, uh, this morning I didn't hear no discussion too much about the legal side of this. Um, if we don't have success, if we have to start all over, you know what road I'm going down. So we need to prepare the city to go down that road, the legal road. Your mic is off. I know you. Right. Know. Yeah, I, I understood. Uh, at the moment, we're going. Uh, the concept is we go to the state with hat in hand, saying, "Please, can we have some more?" Okay, but if they say no, I want you to be, be prepared to go with these cities to the next step, and I don't want us to hum and haw about it. I want you ready. Yes, sir. So that's why I'm trying to tell you. So Don Freeman used to do this a lot. The city, of, former city attorney of Seaside, get all the water attorneys together and y'all chat about it. So uh, you need to start developing your plan if we have to go down the other road. Yes, sir. We can do so. I appreciate that. So I think uh, I just heard a movie reference to Oliver there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, is that where that comes from? Yes. And it'll be answered by another movie reference from Caddyshack, where uh, the the guy who Ted Knight's character says, "You'll have nothing and like it." Yeah, yeah, and that's why I'm getting prepared for. But I want Mr. Loretto prepared to start all over down his road. So uh, uh, that's on that. But then, um, Mr. Loretto, yes, sir, and General Manager, this is indemnity. We talking about forming a coalition. And Bombay is the first one to talk about indemnity. How do we protect the districts? Right. And I want so, to know it early, and I want the board to know it. Yeah, so we're working on the, the Garden Road allocation that the board did, um, which won't go through until we answer the question of indemnity. I know Dave Laredo and Stephanie Locke have already spoken on that. And I th think, Stephanie, are, are we trying to develop a letter to go to the city of Monterey? Well, we have a, we have an existing indemnif indemnification agreement that we've used um, in the past for water credit transfers. Um, so Laredo and I have been working to upgrade it and update it so that it can be used for this project. Right. And I guess the other question that will have to be answered on that one is, is it the city or the developer or both that we're seeking indemnification from? Uh, my answer to that is that the board was very clear that it's the city that should be providing the indemnification. Okay. Uh, I would not feel comfortable just relying upon a developer's indemnification unless we have a much better understanding of how deep that pocket is. And, and yep. you know, that, that could just be a piece of paper. Okay, so I'm good with that. So we'll, we'll work on that. As far as this bigger peninsula-wide effort goes, I don't see that indemnification or legal issues are going to matter because it'll be a negotiated agreement with the state. And so we would, you know, we would be, we, we would have a clear runway. I think right now the garden road piece there, there's not necessarily a clear runway and that was our concern. Okay. And Dave, I just want you to make sure that all these coalitions that we built understand that. Yeah. You know, if we go to another step, where are they going to be and how are we going to do it? That's why I want all that stuff clarified early in the game. Because once you walk into that state office, it's game on. So, you know, I just want y'all to be able to be, be prepared. And I don't want no humming and hawing after they say no. And I want action. That's what I want. So, good job. M Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure we've gone out to the public on this item. All right, and um, I'd like Chair, to I open it up to the public well. for three minutes. Arlene, would you open up for a public tweet? Please, yes. I think, and Director Hoffman had something to say. Yeah, I just have an additional question uh, for Dave, um, or it could be both Dave's for that matter. Um, so as it relates to how the potential cutback and water from the Carmel River as a result of the CDO, how does that uh, 
dovetail or fit into this overall picture? Yeah, it's, it, it will be addressed and that's exactly why uh, Steve Westhoff has been participating in these calls. Um, and, and I think our recognition that our past ability to just simply implement the district's permitting rules with, uh, with people never having to go to Calam to get meters set, that Calam would just sit out, out on the sidelines, that world has changed. And so that's why we're taking this negotiated path. And so it would be uh, something that would have to be consistent with both uh, an extension of the cease and desist order, because that's inevitable at this point, uh, and the ramp downs. So I, I, I know that in order for the state water board to make commitments, they will address that. The, uh, the state board has taken a look at entitlements as if those were present demand. And I believe that that's how we have looked at our allocations that have not yet been permitted, that that gets folded into demand. So any cutback in terms of water use gets applied universally against the entirety uh, and, and should not come off the top against allocations. The whole concept that we've been presenting to the state board is that we need to be able to plan and have some flexibility. And when you take a look at the allocation as, as a percentage of the whole, it's a very, very small amount. And should I say, use the word de minimis? Uh, but uh, so our, our view is that the allocation should not come off the top, that we are all in this together. And if there is a ramp down, then we should accommodate that not to the detriment of these planned uses. Thank you. Are there any raised hands? Yes, um, I see no raised hands. All right. um, if you are calling in, please press star nine on your phone if you would like to comment. I do see a raised hand. Um, please state your name and present your comment. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Luke Coletti. I'm I'm just watching a version of Chinatown, but I'll, <laughs> I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I see no other raised hands. <laughs> okay, thank you, Arlene. Uh, any more board questions? I have a couple, couple more comments, please. Go ahead, Dave. The rest of the um, first of all, before I forget, I want to thank Stephanie for this report. I think you've been uh, pretty assertive with the cities, and the cities have ignored you for over and over again. And you keep going back, and you keep going back, and your emails seem to be very pleasant and not demanding. <laughs> and please, you know, this is important, so please give us some information. I just thought you've done everything you could to get the cities <laughs> around. And, you know, they have their own priorities, too. I, I get all that. But um, if, if they want an allocation, they ought to cooperate a little more in some cases. And I, I just appreciate all your effort. Um, Dave, in the uh, second paragraph on second page of your memo, you make reference to the Coastal Commission taking up the uh, Coastal Development Permit on August 12th to 14th. I think they've set a special date of August the 20th to take all day on this issue. Uh, yeah, they set that date after I wrote that draft. Oh, okay, I just didn't know. If, uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, we're close. And you'll also notice that table six, um, the column doesn't actually add up to 75. Really? <laughs> it, it, it adds up to 70. And there was some text after the table that got edited out that mentioned the, where the other five went to reimburse the district. So even though it's up in the recommendation, uh, uh. it's not with the table. So the presentation you saw on your screen added a line for the district reserve that you don't see in the staff notes. So there were yeah, a couple of hiccups uh, related to uh, editing between draft <laughs> and, yeah. Well, well and th thanks for sharing. Thanks. 
I think I heard you correct that this morning. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so you said that pretty well this morning. So, okay. Uh, anything else on that item? We'll close it. Uh, any suggested items will be placed on future agenda. Director Hoffman, you have anything you want to place on a future agenda? Uh, no, um, other than to follow up on, for example, the uh, the efforts we're making, a report on efforts we're making to find a site for the uh, water or the evapotranspiration um, site that we Yeah, have. the sim, sim station. Okay. That is a great question, too, because, you know, we don't always get good response out of uh, regional parks. But we took a tour over there, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Um, they're still irrigating right near the front entryway of old Rancho Cañada, now Palo Corona. And there's got to be, it. well, previously they said they weren't going to keep the catering business and therefore there was going to be no need for irrigation. Uh, you didn't have to have that grassy uh, area. But they've got some picnic tables out there now and everything, and it is kind of a, a, a nice parkland setting. So that may be it right there. It's just um, getting somebody to commit, I think, is going to be the issue. Uh, Director Riley, you have anything for a future agenda? Uh, not at this time. If I do, I'll run it to the chair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you called General Manager. <laughs> uh general manager you have anything else no i'm i'm all set okay general um, Council, do you have anything thank you no have a wonderful fourth all right y'all have a safe fourth be safe out there uh, thank, you. thank you thank you right. thanks, progress guys. thanks everybody